Hey miners, Mining King here. Today we're going to be going over my solar panels, so let's get right into it. Alright guys, we're back. So this is the left side of my roof if you face the front of my house. So they just put these panels on over the last two days. So this is 44 panels on this side. So I should essentially be doubling up on my solar generation. And then let's walk over to the other side to go see. So this is the right side of my house and this is all my panels <laughs> and, my, and my box. So um, this one here is my main panel for my house. This is irrigation. This was the cable company, but I don't have them anymore. This is my new fiber from Centrally Link. So I have one gig up and one gig down. This is my first solar system here. So in the state of Arizona, due to law restrictions, to put the panels on the other side of the roof, they had to pretty much make a second whole separate account. So I have two accounts. So this one here is its own system. This is my first system. And then this is my second system. And this is a different setup from what the guy told me, obviously, because you just see the one box with this and this has two, I'm assuming inverter boxes. I don't really know a lot about solar, but um, this is where the meter is gonna go. And you can see that the meter is not here yet. So it just got, a, uh, I just had the inspector come through from the city. So now I have to wait 10 to 15 business days for the, um, APS, which is my electrical company to come out and put this meter on and then I get the okay to turn on my service. So, so I am what's called uh, grid tied, which means that whatever solar I am not consuming at that moment, it sells back to the grid. So this is why it has to be approved by the electrical company. And if you miss some of this, We'll just lift this up. If you missed this, I had some water cooling issues, but not with my GPUs. <laughs> so one of the solar guys punctured this PEX pipe, which is for my shower in my guest room. And so it is repaired. So this is repaired right now, but they I'm waiting for the stucco guys to come out here and patch it up. And um, we let it dry for two days. I had a water restoration company come out to check the moisture levels inside the walls, as well as the sheetrock inside to make sure that there wouldn't be, you know, any mold or anything like that later down the road. And he's on, on his, his tool that he used, it showed that everything was dry. So we don't have anything to worry about. So I just kind of want to go over my solar setup. As you see here, if you look down the side of my house, it looks like I could power my whole neighborhood. So anyways, let's go back to my computer and let's take a look at what I'm currently generating right now on my Sunrun. So we're here at my computer right now and we're gonna go over my solar production over the last 30 days. This is what my production looks like over the last 30 days with my solar. And some days you can see are really good and other days are not so good. So it will depend on when the sun sets. It depends on if it's cloudy or not that day. Um, it depends on a, on a few different factors. So lately it's been pretty good. You know, it's, it's about a day behind on statistics because today's the sixth and this is yesterday. So it hasn't updated this yet, so. But the previous day, I was at 101 kilowatt hours, 103, 102, 106. When, when the summer comes and the days are longer, right, I'll be probably more at 110, 120 kilowatt hours on the current ones I have. Now, this is just for my original existing system, which has 48 panels. So this is what I'm pulling in. So I'm getting around 100, maybe on days that are not so great. It looks like I'm getting a low of like 80, you know, almost 90. So that's how many kilowatt hours I'm pulling in. To figure out, we'll go to my calculator here. And so I do, I have 5,000 watts continuously. And we're going to divide that by 1,000, which is 
five, and then we're going to times that by, that's how many kilowatt hours I'm using by 24 hours, and this is how many kilowatt hours that my farm is using day in and day out. So right now, I currently do not meet the demand of my farm right now. So I'm hoping I got 44 more panels. So both sides of my roof are completely covered except for, you know, like some vents and things like that, that they can't put a panel there because of, you know, you know, codes and regulations and things like that. Besides that, though, there's a panel in every square inch that they could possibly lay down on my roof. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to almost double my yield. So it's not quite as many. It's like four or five less, they said. So I'll probably maybe get like 90 to 100 since this is going to get these numbers will get more. Like I said, as the days in the summer for Arizona get longer and it stays sunny till, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night, I'll have more and more sun. As the days get longer, I'll yield more. But something else I wanted to go over with you guys is also maybe some misconceptions about solar, right? So I'm in Arizona, which is an extremely sunny state, right? We have sun pretty much all year round almost, right? So let's go over a 12-month shot. So in July, this is when my system was started, was halfway through July, right? That's when I got the okay, the approval to turn on the solar. This is why it's only a half month, right? So these other months are all months that were when the system was producing. So August was really great, right? We got like almost 2,700 kilowatt hours. The next month in September, right, they got the days are a little bit shorter. So see, the days are getting shorter, so we're getting less sun. And so look, that's 500 kilowatt hours that I lost from August to September. And this has pretty much stayed the same. And look, so we lost about... 200 in october but look at this in november we're down to 1400 kilowatts that's 1200 kilowatt difference from august to november and then we're in december right we're going you know into winter and now look instead of being at 2600 in the summer we're only at 1100 i just want you guys to be a little aware that just because you have solar it does help offset some of that cost but during the times of year, you're going to get more or less sun, and that's also going to reflect your bill. So typically in the wintertime, your, usually your electrical companies will give you a cheaper rate, but still you'll be using more electricity from your grid because you're not producing as much solar. So that is one, you know, one drawback of solar is it depends on the time of year and where you're located at and how much sun you receive. Uh, uh, let's go we could go over billing a little bit so i'm going to blur out um my name and you know obviously my account numbers and things like that but i'll let you guys see like how solar works pretty much i pay a a rate to the solar company for for the solar as long as I have it. It's been this rate, $190.50. It it doesn't change. As you can see here, a monthly charge of 183 with $7.50. So how they get this number is is they charge me 11 cents by what my solar system is rated for to produce to me. Now I still pay this $190 in the winter time. So that's irregardless. It's this is like a a standard fee no matter what so just keep that in mind so the way that i have my solar is i lease my solar because solar is very expensive right to have this many panels on my house and it would cost me you know probably anywhere from 60 to 80 maybe even ninety thousand um, dollars i believe the first system they wanted was fifty thousand dollars so i'm sure i'm in the hundred thousand dollar price point of this so I lease my equipment and I pretty much pay them a guaranteed amount every month. But I will never own the equipment. So there's so I'll never own it. It won't be mine, but I didn't want to buy a depreciating asset with this company because when you when you buy solar in my opinion, it's kind of like a car, right? There's always going to be newer technologies, better panels down the road. And the only thing that your panels are going to do over the next 20 years is just become less valuable. When I, with this option with Sunrun to lease, they maintain the equipment. If anything breaks, 
they pay for it as well as any downtime I do have. So let's say I'm down for two weeks on half of my solar because an inverter went out or whatever. They will pay the difference in my power bill for the amount of time that I was down for. So I really do like that. That way, you know, it's another kind of peace of mind that they that they kind of put with their lease option. So I lease my stuff just because I just thought it made it was, you know, financially it was better suited for me. This isn't financial advice. This is just what I chose to do with my solar. So also part of my solar is is I'm also what's called grid tied. If you're not familiar with that, pretty much what grid tied means is when I'm producing solar, any amount of that solar that's not being used will will go back to the grid. And what that does is is that helps offset my cost when I do pull from the grid like later on in the night or maybe in the evening when I'm not producing as much solar. So let's say I generate $30 in credit during the day and I only use $25 of those credits. So actually, I was at a negative that day and they still owe me because I produced more uh, in credits than what I used. So you were, you're actually negative, which is the best case scenario. So that's just grid tight if you guys don't know that. So in the future, when I do get the meter hooked up and functional and I do turn on and I have ran it for about 30 days, I will be doing another uh, overview of how much solar I'm producing as well as, you know, like how much that's changed in my APS bill. So you guys won't be able to see my account and my name on here but you guys can see right here what my bill was so last month i paid this bill um so it says how much i produced and how much generation of electricity of of on peak off peak and so forth so i want to when i do the next video in one month from now i want to see what the difference is as far as how much I'm paying for electricity, right? Right now, with my Sun Run, I currently pay $190 a month for the one side, and then I also added the second side. So I wonder how much of a difference my bill is going to be. So if you add $190 to $350, that's about approximately $500 and, you know, $500 and $45 ish is what about my bill is to run my farm. So when I do the one month comparison, I also would like to see how much I've reduced my bill by adding this second solar system in. Well, all right, guys, this is the Mining King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.